Welcome to my channel. If you want to catch my newest videos, I post every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing T-Mobile stock and analyzing its financial ratios. Become a member and support the channel for 99 cents a month. Get a more in-depth valuation for $9.99 or $49.99 a month. The highest level is $99 for a private Zoom session to discuss financial statements. See the link in the very top of the description. T-Mobile is the second largest wireless carrier in the US with 98 million customers. Let's get started with the model. This is a really big company, 144 billion market cap. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market and they're trading at 114 a share and they have 1.3 billion shares outstanding. To calculate the shares outstanding, it's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, 1.3 billion. Let's look at the financials. So free cash flow is the way you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that back to today's dollars. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So if a company has positive free cash flow, it could pay dividends, pay down debt, acquire other businesses, or grow its business. If it has negative free cash flow, it might not be able to do any of those things. This company has negative free cash flow every year, which doesn't look good. If we look at the cash flow statement, as you know, free cash flow is cash flow from operations, which is up here, minus capital expenditures. So they're operating with positive free cash flow, which is great. They're investing all the cash they generate plus more into their business to grow it later on. Hopefully this investment pays off for them and according to T-Mobile's CEO, this is the strategy they're taking. Their net income is positive each year. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. It's the bottom of the income statement. So it is good they're operating profitably. And their revenue grows every year by about three or four billion dollars. It goes from 37 billion to 45 billion. And their margins are all over the place. It goes from 4% to 11% down to 7, 8%. Net profit margin is net income over revenue. It's how well you convert your revenue into profit. The higher your expenses, the lower your net income and the lower your net profit margin. In 2019, the 8% profit margin means they converted 8% of their revenue into profit. That means 92% went towards expenses. The big concern is the negative free cash flow each year, but the company has a vision, plus it has a good amount of cash on its balance sheet. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $23 billion of debt and $28 billion of equity. They pay 4.84% interest on their debt and the cost of debt is 3.64%. To get cost of debt, it's interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And they have 45% debt in their capital structure. I prefer to invest in companies with under 50% debt in their capital structure. That means they have 55% equity. And the cost of equity is 4.7%. To get cost of equity, we use the capital asset pricing model. And part of the CAPM model is the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they have a really low beta, 0.31. So the stock moves about one third of the market. The lower the beta, the lower the cost of equity and the less risk you're taking as an investor. Their WAC is 4.23%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And the WAC is a discount rate companies use to figure out if they want to take on a new project or not. For example, if there was a new project that cost this company $1 million up front, but they would generate $100,000 of free cash flow over the next 20 years, they would discount the future free cash flows 4.23% back to today's dollars. If you discounted those 20 years of free cash flows and it was $1.5 million, that means the project would generate $1.5 million and cost $1 million so you would take on the project because it's adding $500,000 of value. But if the free cash flows discounted back to today were $800,000, you would not take on a project because you'd be losing $200,000. Whatever project you take on, it must add value to the company. 
and the WAC of 4.23% is a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows for this model. We estimated four years of future free cash flows and they're all negative. We also estimated terminal value which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital and we get a value of the company of $282 billion. We divide that by 1.3 billion shares and we get a calculated stock price at 224. They're trading at 114, so they're trading at a 49% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is even higher than me. They're at 311 a share. Simply Wall Street takes the average analyst estimate to get their valuation. So analysts are projecting great growth for this company because they're investing so much in their business now, they're thinking the future is going to be even better. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So the stock price has only gone up the past few years. So it seems like a really great growth stock that has good potential. And this is a type of company you want to invest in. A big company that's going to be around a long time. And the stock price has nothing to do with how well a company is doing. It's just a function of the stock price. The only thing that predicts the stock price is supply and demand of the market. The more people that want to buy a stock, the higher the price goes, even if the company is not performing well. And the more people that sell a stock or don't buy a stock will push the price lower. Even if a company is performing well, the stock market is forward thinking. People look to the future, not the past. Let's look at the financial ratios. They don't have such a great PE. The median is 16.5, the average is 18.4. A PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're 41.5. So investors are paying $41.50 for $1 of earnings. They have a decent price to sales ratio. The median is 2.0, the average is 4.7. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. Calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, there are 3.2. So investors are paying $3.20 for $1 revenue. Price to book is a little high. The median is 2.4, the average is 4.9. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, there are 5.0. So investors are paying $5 for $1 book value. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. Good interest coverage ratio, the median is 4.0, the average is 13.2. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 5.0, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. It's also called operating income on the income statement. ROE is a little low, the median is 12%, the average is 13%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're only at 12%. Current ratio is a little low as well. The median is 1.3. The average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current debts and payables, which means they may need to take on more debt. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Bell Canada, Rogers, Shaw Communications, AT&T, TELUS, Vonage, Verizon and Zoom, all in the same industry as T-Mobile. And T-Mobile is here in the middle. And if they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they are worse in PE. They're much better in price to sales and price to book. Even though I said they didn't have a great price to sales and price to book ratio, you always want to compare it against the average in the industry. They have a weak current ratio. ROE is a little less than average, debt is a little better than average, and they're a really big company, so their market cap is bigger than the average. They don't pay a dividend, the average in the industry is 3.4%. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 49% discount, their ratios are decent, and their financials are also decent, it's just their free cash flow, that's the big issue. But as long as the company keeps growing, keeps generating cash and paying off its interest payments, everything should be fine. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Become a member for as little as 99 cents, up to $99. Thanks for watching.